You hear that, Mr. Anderson? That is the sound of inevitability. At the end of the 1999 movie, The Matrix, Agent Smith tried to persuade Neo to give up and accept the inevitable. Fortunately, he failed, or the movie would have ended badly, and the two sequels wouldn't have been possible. But that's how things go in the fictional world of movies. The outcome is predetermined based on the writer's script and producer's vision. In The Matrix world, Neo's victory was inevitable, even when he surrendered, and by that surrender, destroyed Agent Smith. If you've been watching Morning Minutes in the Bible from the start, you will know that I believe all good fictional heroes are modeled after the true conquering hero, Jesus. Neo is no different, and even in his sacrificial death was carried out as if on a cross. His victory was modeled after the inevitable victory of Jesus. Jesus' reign on David's throne in the heavenly Jerusalem was set in the mind of God before the creation of the world, Ephesians 3, verse 11. The absolute victory and enthronement of Jesus, despite the opposition of the Jews and the Romans, was inevitable even before the promise was made to David in 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 through 16. However, as noted yesterday, there are some who believe Jesus came to earth to throw off the oppressive Roman regime and restore the Jewish nation as a permanent earthly kingdom and rule forever from Jerusalem on the throne of David. For them, Jesus failed. Now, it's one thing for the Jews of Jesus' day to think that, but something else entirely for people to think it today. It's absolutely foolish to believe in a failed Jesus, but that's exactly what premillennialism teaches. Its adherents say that the same Jesus who was rejected by the Jews 2,000 years ago must come back to earth, presumably very soon, and persuade the Jews to accept him as their Messiah now, so he can reign for a thousand years on a physical throne in Jerusalem. They teach this, despite the fact that God's plan could not be defeated or even delayed. Not long after receiving the promise, David penned Psalm 2, which celebrated the fact that God would set his son on his throne, despite the world's opposition. To think that the Jews could stop God's plan is just as foolish as thinking that Satan was going to defeat him. Jesus had been sitting on David's throne in heaven for 2,000 years. It was inevitable. In Acts 4, verses 23 through 28, Peter quoted Psalm 2 and declared how the Jews and Romans had gathered to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur, verse 28. The Messiah's reign was inevitable. Today, he rules and reigns in his church, in his kingdom citizens, in his people, in their hearts and minds. Men and women all across the world who have turned from dead idols to serve the living God. The only question is, does Jesus reign in you? Don't claim it. Do it. Turn away from the idol that is this world in complete submission to his will and he will be your king. Thanks for watching today's Morning Minutes in the Bible. Until tomorrow, this is James McClenney, hoping you have a great day.